Master Community Workforce Plan is a really important thing for this city. It's, it's the plan that gets everybody on the same page, all focused on a, on a common outcome, a common metric. It's making sure that we're spending money real efficiently and toward the, the common goal. It establishes objective metrics and measures where we can uh, check and make sure that we're accomplishing what we need to accomplish. The goals are big. You know, we have an affordability issue in this city. We're trying to attack it a, th a thousand different ways. Uh, and one of the ways that we address that is helping people earn more money, get better jobs. Uh, so this is a plan that's, that is designed to pull the entire community together, common focus, common direction, to deal with our most serious challenge. What we're seeing in terms of the, the first year of this workforce master planning, we could be much more successful with the current dollars that are being spent. We could be much more strategic. So this first year was about establishing our baseline and really getting a clear picture of what truly works and for whom and how we could redistribute our resources to make sure that we're truly impacting those who are um, really the most left out of, of this pool of opportunity in Travis County. There are three major ways that we've sought this year to contribute to the success of the Master Community Workforce Plan. The first is we have helped promote and put in place systems for measurement and accountability within the plan. We have a key partner in this work through the Ray Marshall Center out of the University of Texas. They are helping us with data evaluation and analysis to make sure we've got the right systems in place. The second thing we've done is to put in place industry sector partnerships. Under the workforce plan, we're targeting three industry sectors, and we've already launched two of those sector partnerships, specifically in healthcare and advanced manufacturing skill trades. The third thing we've done is we have implemented policy changes here at Workforce Solutions. These policy changes are specifically designed to upskill and advance current workers who are working in any of these industry sectors that we're targeting so that they can have access to skills that they need in a timely manner, ultimately bring more value to their employers and also see their paychecks rise at the same time. Workforce Solutions actually plays two roles in the Master Community Workforce Plan. The first role we play is as a backbone agency. So we are helping lead and facilitate this master community workforce plan on behalf of the community and we won't be successful without the full community working with us and beside us. The second role that we play is as an implementer. We are a funder of workforce development training. For the past three years, we have held ourselves to a higher standard of seeing that those individuals that receive training through Workforce Solutions, any one or any number of our contractors, are able to achieve what they came to us for, that they achieve a training-related job. We baselined three years ago at 43% training-related jobs, meaning 43% of individuals that receive training through Workforce Solutions were able to be placed in a job that related to their training. We said that wasn't an acceptable number. Just as our community now under the master plan is saying we can do better as a community working together. We buckled down, we made some changes, and I'm proud to say last year we reported a 77% training related placement rate. Why that matters is it's our contribution as a funder in this community to helping keep Austin affordable by seeing that individuals who come to us for skills training actually get those skills and then get into the workforce. I think we've achieved here in the city the ability to really integrate some of the information we've learned. Of course, we have a stronger platform of relationships that we're now drawing on within the region that are focused on workforce development efforts, as well as the audience that we're looking to connect with in workforce development. But we've been able to take that information and, and use it in a variety of different ways here within the city of Austin. It's heavily impacted our Chapter 380 Business Incentive Program, where you will find the opportunity opportunity to create more connections for those who have economic disadvantages, as well as apprenticeships and internships and what have you. So we're excited about those opportunities. But also it's better informed our spending habits here and how we should be working with our partners to reflect on the data that we have available and make sure that we are providing top-notch services to these populations and that we are accountable with data sets to be able to show success for those individuals moving through our systems.
I see the Chamber's role as the premier business organization in a role of advocacy with the business leadership. The Chamber has been involved with helping to increase the direct college enrollment rate from high school uh, so that folks can get better trained in post-secondary education. It has been in trying to figure out how uh, students who have stopped out of higher education can re-enroll. It has been through business recruitment and expansion interviews where we determine specifically which employers uh, would like to upskill their employees uh, in a hyper-competitive market and also how we can align the regulatory and uh, other budgetary processes so that we can increase training dollars into proven and scalable training programs. For us, the thing that's most exciting is that there seems to be a language that's evolved in our, our business community, in the social service community. People are starting to understand um, that middle school jobs, education and training so people can get middle school jobs, is a way out of poverty and they all want to play. So when I have conversations with people in the community, we're speaking a common language and it seems like people are starting to align with that. The biggest thing that's happened here at Goodwill is that we have a, uh, a capital campaign for our Goodwill Career and Technical Academy. We've always had training programs here, but we sense that the time is right now to go to the community for an ask to make this even bigger and even more aligned with the three verticals, the three major uh, professional categories that the master plan says we need. So at LifeWorks, uh, what's happened this first year, while we have been introducing our master plan and executing on it, um, LifeWorks itself has gone, come to fidelity on our IPS workforce model. And that is a model that is strength-based, um, income-first um, programming. So putting youth into um, uh, work situations as quickly as possible. What's wonderful about that is that in tandem with what's been happening um, with workforce uh, plan is that now our youth are reaching stability in immediate income employment, right, necessity. Um, I'm trying to survive, I'm trying to put a roof over my head, so I need income, any income, doesn't matter if it's my passion. Um, but now that they've actually had sustained um, employment for longer periods of time, it's given them the space to heal and also the clarity to understand what it is that really excites them and motivates them to come to work. And that's where our, our connection um, with our, our strategy team is so integral because we now understand where are those partners that truly meet the needs of our clients when they're ready to engage in that training program. In the first year of the Master Workforce Plan, American Youth Works created this concept of the professional networking program, where we were really striving to connect our young people to professionals in the industries that they were seeking jobs in. We knew it was important for them to build relationships with professionals who would be there on the backside of their training to hire them into the jobs that they're seeking training in. It's really important for our young people who may feel disconnected from the industries they're seeking or a professional network to have those relationships that build over a long time and whether they go to work for that person or someone else, they'll have a network of professionals to, to lean on when it comes time to seek that employment post-training. When you talk about a, a workforce master plan for the entire community, you're drawing data from various sources. And so how can, how can you put that together in a consolidated um, kind of a, a, a bench, a platform to move from? And so I think that was probably maybe one of the more challenging things to, to kick it off. So the secondary is what are those right skill sets? You know, we can say that uh, we want to target these four career pathways, uh, but are what, what are the right skill sets within each one of those? So that's, that's another challenge. And then the other is whenever you're in a community where there's, uh, you know, under 3% unemployment rate, everybody's working. So we're talking about people who are underemployed uh, and maybe working two, maybe in some cases, three jobs. So they're, they're working all their time. How do you get them to go back and get the right skill set in one of those four pathways? They still have to pay for their rent. They still have to put food on the table. They have to pay for childcare. So how do you provide the right type of incentives and environment for them to come back? and get the right skill set to benefit business and industry. So the Master Community Workforce Plan for Capital Ideas really enabled us to do a deep dive into the data, into nursing in particular, 
much more sophisticated data, much more in-depth data, both about the composition of the opportunities. Some of these are new jobs opening up. Others are a large number of replacement positions as older nurses retire. It's also identified that Austin ranks particularly low in terms of the number of graduates per 100,000 population. And that tells us that there's a lot of headroom, a lot of opportunity in our system if we can now go to figuring out exactly it is what we have to change. So, so far, KLRU has released four videos, uh, each highlighting four different individuals in four different trades. In each of these, we're, what we're trying to do is uh, address both the population groups we most want to engage and then the jobs that are most immediately available and offer the quickest pathway to a decent wage. In 2018, St. David's Healthcare was recognized as having a nationally recognized apprenticeship program for nurses. It will add on the job training for them, it will give them preceptor and mentorship uh, opportunities, it will also give them a pay raise in their first year of employment. Basically, it takes our novice nurses from novice to professional. So in February, we will have our first cohort. So over the past year for SkillPoint Alliance, uh, in regards to the master plan, we've really been strategically focused on you know, building uh, a collaboration with industry partners, opportunities to really engage with uh, the industry, the healthcare industry and the skilled trades industry, and really um, helped us to really refocus um, the, the areas that we're training and really look at what those industry needs are. And we've actually really uh, taken extra steps to fine tune that training uh, to meet the needs of our employers.